Hello and welcome to another review of Drones Visual. If you recall, some time ago I published the unboxing of the drone CGO35 that caught many people's attention because of its price and functionality. What I will do today is sort of a quick test video of these functions, at least the main ones. After this video, I'll be releasing more videos covering in more details the functions you will see in, in the video. But this is sort of, mm, if I may call it so, a confirmation video. Confirmation because it will pretty much confirm whether the advertised functions are available and whether they work properly. I had some chance during the weekend uh, to fly a couple of times and I have good news uh, for you, as you will see in the video. Based uh, on the questions I received, people seem to be mostly concerned about whether this drone could even uh, pack a GPS. After all, the price is certainly inviting for a brushless GPS drone. So the answer to that question I will provide to you right away. Yes, the CG035 does pack a GPS. The functions uh, I will be testing in the video are GPS stabilized flying mode, auto takeoff and landing modes, return home mode, and the circle around also known as point of interest uh, function. As many of you know, there are two versions of this aircraft, at least there will be two versions available. This version I have over here is the basic version, basic because it does not come with a camera or FPV equipment. Uh, the other version, as you may have already guessed, is that it will be the FPV version or advanced version, uh, whatever you may call it, and it will come equipped with uh, an FPV camera and with uh, an FPV screen that will be uh, on the transmitter. So okay, then without further ado, let's start with the testing. Initially, I would like to cover how to power on the drone and how to calibrate it. This is very simple, but nonetheless, let's see how it's done. First, we make sure that the battery is fully charged. I neglected to do, I mean, to check this initially during the first flying session, and I did not test as much as I would have liked, so keep an eye on that. Then we proceed to insert the battery in the drone, and once we do this, we will see the LED lights under the arms will turn on. Now, this does not mean that the quad is power on. To actually power on the drone, we need to access a tiny button under right next to the landing gear and press it once. It might be a little bit tricky to find it without looking, uh, it's on the right side. Once we press that button, we will then hear a familiar melody coming from the drone and then as you can see here, we need to turn on the transmitter the same way I did it. It's a little bit tricky to do it, but you get used to it. Initially, when the quad is powered on, the LED lights uh, that are right under the motors will rapidly be blinking. Uh, you can pretty much at this point unlock the motors and fly. However, I advise you that you do a compass calibration in order to be able to use the GPS mode properly. To enter the compass calibration mode, move the SWB switch from position one to position two around four times, just like I showed you before. And then once you do this, basically you proceed to rotate the drone clockwise around six times. And again, uh, the LED lights right on there will let us know when the calibration has been completed because they will start blinking again. Basically, once uh, we see that the lights are blinking again, we know that we can stop the calibration process. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin checking out how well the GPS uh, mode works uh, by flying in GPS mode or GPS position hold uh, and checking whether there is a lot of drift or there is some unusual behavior. Okay. I use now the auto takeoff function to bring the drone up. I'm holding the transmitter with one hand and the other hand I have on the camera. As you can see, I'm currently flying in GPS mode. Let me bring the quad a little bit lower so I can turn it around and record it better. As you can see, this drone is very docile in GPS uh, mode, uh, so someone with no experience whatsoever can easily control it. You can notice that once I stop controlling it, uh, with a transmitter, it sticks to that position and stays uh, there like a rock. Very slight variations that get immediately corrected by the flight controller and the altitude is being kept without issues. Uh, I was, like many of you, very skeptic about the ability of this quad to keep its position. In fact, uh, there are many people doubt that were doubting, as I mentioned before, the fact that it could even pack a GPS. But as you can see, the CG035 is elegantly showing that it can hold position with the same precision that uh, other much more expensive aircraft. I think I would be forced to give uh, 10 points when it comes to uh, this function. I think even if it would 
only offer the GPS uh, hold function, already many people will be eager to buy it. But as you know, there are many other functions that we will be testing in this video. Let me please warn uh, some of you that you should not get this close to the aircraft uh, once it's flying uh, to avoid accidents. Keep a certain distance. I'm actually not as close as it seems. I'm using a rod with the camera mounted on it. I'm not that close, uh, I mean, physically to the aircraft. Well, this uh, has demonstrated that the ZO35 uh, is capable of holding its position without problems during good weather conditions. The next thing I would like to try uh, is how well it behaves in windy conditions. So what I will do is to show you the auto takeoff function in GPS mode under windy conditions and let's see how things develop. Now to activate the auto takeoff uh, function, we press the center button three times continuously and then uh, the quad will unlock the motors and ascend to certain altitude. Here the conditions are much more different than before. Uh, if you take a look at the trees, you will realize how windy it is. Yet, surprisingly, this quad, which is extremely light, is fighting the wind like a champion. And of course, as you saw, the auto takeoff function works flawlessly, which is pretty nice. You can take a look at the circle under and see how well uh, it is behaving. To activate the auto landing function, we do the same. Press three times the center button and the quad will automatically land. This is very simple and it works without problems, although you saw that it struggles a bit when landing because of the heavy wind. I want to warn you about the auto landing in very windy conditions because there are some problems that you could experience. Uh, I will go ahead now and show you uh, what those problems could be. Let me once more here uh, do the auto takeoff. If you recall, we do this by pressing three times the large button in the center of the transmitter. It's still very windy now and uh, after hovering for like around a few seconds I will proceed now to uh, go ahead and do the auto landing. As the drone starts to approach the ground, keep an eye on it. Okay, it's getting close to the ground now and... Bah. As you can see, under very windy conditions uh, the drone could get destabilized when it's close to a critical point, close to the ground, so be aware of this. This only happens if it's very, very windy. And the next function I would like to put to the test is the so-called follow me mode, uh, that I know that is quite popular, uh, quite popular function among many of you. Uh, so to activate it, I keep the quad flying in GPS mode and then I press the SW switch. Uh, as I will start to uh, walk away, the drone follows me, facing, uh, facing me all the time. Although I notice a slight change in altitude that you might have noticed as well, I will return to this function and try uh, to further test it in my next videos. But I can confirm that it works. Another very important function that uh, many of you obviously are interested in is the so-called auto return home function that will, I will proceed to try now. The drone is flying uh, around 30 to 40 meters away from me. Not sure if you can see it well though. Uh, of course, it's hovering in GPS mode, so lowering the SWB uh, stick to position two uh, will activate the GPS uh, the GPS hold mode. And then, if we move it to position three, it then activates the auto return home uh, function. I must say, it takes a little while for the quad to respond, but it does. The quad has started to change position now and begins its approach to the landing spot. It's hard to see because it's not a large aircraft, but if you look well, you will see a white dot approaching my current position. Let me adjust the position of the camera so you can get a, uh, get a better view of it. As otherwise, uh, we might lose, lose it from sight as it descends. I repeat, it's a little slow when it comes to returning, but it seems to be uh, doing so far a decent job. I think in this case, recording against the light might be good, as you'll see the drone way better like this, in a form of shadow, of course, but, well, okay. Now here it comes, slowly approaching uh, the landing position. The takeoff point was the center of the circle, so we will be able to see how precise it is. Okay, okay, here it comes, come on, buddy, you're almost there. Keep the good work. Slowly approaching. Wow, surprisingly, yep, it has landed right next to the circle with a precision of around 1.5 meters, 
which is pretty much like the Xiaomi drone, which is a way um, is a much more expensive aircraft. So actually, I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, the next function we will be testing today is the so-called circle or circle a point or point of interest, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's probably the most complex function. Uh, as it requires a little bit more than just pressing a button. I mean, it's actually very easy, but in comparison to just pressing a button or changing the position of a switch, it's more complex, that's what I mean. I will now uh, select a point in the field and I will position myself in that point that I have selected. I will hover the quad in GPS mode for a couple of seconds, maybe a minute actually, uh, after hovering for some seconds, the aircraft will record this position and then we can proceed to activate the circle mode by lowering the SWA switch to position 2. Once we do this, we need to decide what will be the radius of the circle and the direction of movement of the aircraft. We will fly uh, forward and then start rotating the aircraft to try to circle around the center point uh, where we are located. Please note that you might need to uh, maybe do more than 180 degrees. Initially I stopped after completing around 45 degrees but the aircraft did not continue flying. So my advice to you is uh, to actually just do a circle around, I mean do a circle around your position and you will notice at some point that the quad uh, stops, rotates a bit uh, starts facing you and then uh, it starts following the course you set. Once you set the follow the flying course, the aircraft will take over and it will continue the trajectory. The awesome thing about this mode is the fact that the drone will be actually uh, will circle uh, facing you. And uh, you might be asking, well, why is this fun why is this important that the aircraft uh, is facing me? Well, it's important because if there is a camera on the quad, you will want the camera to be facing the center, uh, at least I would. Now, uh, the circle the quad flies is not as perfect as the one I flew before, but it's decent and the quad is accurate in the trajectory it follows, meaning that it will repeat the same course with little to no deviation. Once you exit the circle mode by returning the SWA switch to position 1, the quad will remain in its last position, basically in the position it was before moving the switch, which is actually pretty awesome as well. So, so far this function is confirmed as well and I'm happy with the results. Well, I think uh, this will conclude my video for today. It certainly won't be my last video of the CGO35. I will come back and I will show you in more details some of the functions uh, that we just uh, witnessed. And then, of course, you can ask me anything you would like to know and I will put it to the test. I still need to try better how the quad flies in altitude mode, not GPS hold, just altitude uh, hold. And I need to cover uh, the headless mode, uh, connectivity via USB with a PC. This will be part of my third video. And of course, I would like to also uh, check the failsafe. I mean, if, if you lose uh, connection with the quad, whether it will return to the landing position and so on. To conclude, I would like to state that so far, I'm positively impressed with the CGO35 uh, and its capabilities, especially taking into consideration its market price, which is only $118 for the basic version that does not include the camera or FPV equipment. All the functions tested worked perfectly. Having said this, I repeat that I still need to test better the altitude hold, headless mode, and uh, check the flying time and do the connectivity with the PC. So I would like you to stay tuned for the next video uh, because I'll be covering uh, all those things. Uh, if you have any questions or would like to uh, correct anything that I have said, please drop me some comments, do not hesitate. And uh, for those of you who are interested in the world of drones and would like to receive the latest news and reviews directly from China, please subscribe to my channel and uh, I would like to see you all in my next video.